It's Jack, who's a Spurs fan, and he's yeah. with me now. Jack, good evening to you, pal. You all right, mate? Hello, Jack. Jack, well, I mean, tell me about that, please. Tell me your instant reaction to that 5-1 hammering that you've just gone through. Well, I mean, you, obviously the result is gotten, but, I mean, you, you, the injustice of the, uh, the decision for the second goal is the yeah. thing that you can't get away from. So, I mean, the, the, they were saying on the telly, uh, you know, the, the fact that they, they end up smashing us, that it sort of takes away from it, but they don't, because... I mean, it's a different game. If we, if if that goal's not given, and, yeah. and then we go we go down the other end, score it's one 0 Different game, and you got you, you got after that. But yeah, it's, it was an extraordinary is, decision, but it wasn't the only extraordinary decision because, in my view, Peter Cech should have been sent off in this game this afternoon as well. I mean, the situation yeah. is he goes through Adebayor is clearly pulled down in the area. Bale slots it home. The ref allows advantage, which is quite right, but he should then have disciplined Cech and sent him off for bringing down a well, player think... in the area who was on goal. I don't get it. I don't get how where, where you draw the line. Cause, yeah, checks checks out that by the denied it his chance. It, we're lucky that we've got Bell running through, but he's still done the foul, hasn't he? You can't you can't decide that like it's only a foul when when the team uh, can benefit. That's how advantage works. That, that's the point of advantage. And then you take it back. Yeah. Check, check shouldn't be on the pitch, really, when you think about it. No, no, he, shouldn't. Clear it really. he shouldn't. Just, yeah. uh, just compare it to the Liverpool decision the night against Blackburn. Almost exactly the same. If you bring a player down yeah. in the area, now everybody was criticising me afterwards, saying there's no such rule as last man on goal. Well, there is actually an interpretation of the rule last man on goal, but it's about committing a professional crime and denying a goal-scoring opportunity. He denied Adebayo yeah. the goal-scoring opportunity, whether you like it or not. It was just fortuitous yeah, that Bale happened to be there. Checks lucky that we actually had a player following up. If, if we didn't have a player following up, he's up the pitch and we've got a penalty as well. So, checks, checks benefits from the fact that we're, we we had a player following up. It's, it makes a mockery of it, really. When well, well, it's he checks, Check knows what he's doing. He's taking out the man. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. It was an extraordinary uh, decision, Jack, because Mr Atkinson got half of the equation right, i.e. allowed the advantage and therefore chalked up the goal, quite rightly, to Spurs. Had he gone the other way and said, right, I'm sorry, I stopped playing the moment the player came down, you've got to take a penalty, that would have been disastrous for Spurs because you might have missed the penalty. But nevertheless, as you quite rightly say, Czech committed a professional foul, which normally would mean a red card. He got away with it because the ball went into the goal. It's almost like Czech, you know, that Mr Atkinson was saying, well, I won't send you off because actually you've already been punished in the sense that Spurs scored. Rubbish. That's, that's not the case yeah. at all. Up to the Skype wall, Danny is there. Good evening and welcome to the show, Danny. Evening, Porky. Yeah, listen, mate, good to have you on the show. Thank you. Now, why are you taking such an interest in Harry Redknapp? I know he could be our future England manager. I'm fully in support of that. What have you got to say about that? Well, I, I just think that if you take the season as a whole, I think he's choking it a little bit. I mean, when it's come down to the business end of it, mm -hmm. what he needs to get results, he's not getting results. They lost at home to Norwich, and I've seen Norwich in the past few weeks, and they looked to me like they were running out of a bit of steam, to be honest with you. Yeah. And he got, he got outfoxed, outfoxed by Paul Lambert. He's been outfoxed today by uh, Roberto Di Matteo. And, you know, at one stage I was in support of him, but now I'm really, really wondering, does he have what it takes for the big games? For when it really comes to the crunch time and the pressure's on, yeah. does he have what it takes? Well, I think he has got what it takes, Danny. And I, my question to you would be, well, if not Harry, who? Well, that's a good question, Porky. Of course it is. And, it, and it's an easy one to level when you discount someone to, to ask, well, well, who's in a better position? Yeah. And, and I think, personally, I think Roy Hodgson would do a very good job. As much as I'd hate to lose him, yeah. I think Pardew is by far and away the manager of the year. Look at what he's done. Everyone's talking about Tottenham, Harry Redknapp. Yeah. We're equal on points in the league with him. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, you're absolutely right there. Newcastle made a fantastic late run and, and, and well done for on, on, on a great season. But look, Harry, to my mind, is absolutely the right man for the job. There is nobody else. Uh, I know what you're saying about him choking it and having a, ba a bad run, but he had those three fixtures, didn't he? Arsenal, Everton, Manchester United got walloped in all three. That was the turning point of his season. Nothing seems to have gone right for him since. They've had a couple of, uh, of comeback uh, victories, obviously. But I do think that the England situation has probably caused sort of mixed emotions at the FA, at uh, Spurs and within Harry's own head because he is the heir apparent to the England team. Surely his thoughts must be on what's going to happen this summer, even if he's only thinking, should I take over sooner rather than later or later rather than sooner so as that he's got a grip on things and he's not just taking somebody else's team. I think it's all contributed to the fact that 
you know, Spurs have stumbled towards the end. But I have to say, Danny, I wholly endorse Harry as the next manager of England. He is a fantastic man manager. He, t he, he takes boys into, uh, you know, under his wing. He, he develops them. He makes them feel good about themselves. He's done a remarkable job at Spurs, even if they are going to slip at the end of the season, even if you push them out of the top four places. For me, it's Harry Redknapp. There's nobody else. There's only one thing I'll challenge on there, Pork. It's what you're saying is uh, his mental... Uh, his mental toughness. You're saying, well, well, well. The speculation with the England jobs got to him. Well, if if he's not mentally strong enough to cope with that speculation and, and everything else, then he's not mentally strong enough to deal with the English job. That you know, many managers have mm. have, have fallen foul of the fact that it's it's such a high pressure job because of all the the media interest and the fan interest yeah. and everything else. And and I seem to remember a lot of people turned it down yeah. before Steve McLaren got it. Yes, that's um, right. A lot of people turn it down because they, they didn't want the pressure of the job. Yeah. And if Redknapp can't handle pressure at this end of the season, then maybe he's not the right man for the job, Porky. Stay ahead of the game with Sports Tonight Live. Don't miss a thing. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Search for Sports Tonight Live on Facebook and like our fan page. Follow Sports Tonight TV on Twitter and tweet us your thoughts and opinions. Sports Tonight Live, it's the platform for the fans.